uh, the next speaker. It's Roman Havronchenko, open source strategy at Victoria Metrics. Please uh, say thank you to our speaker. <laughs> Roman, please. Uh, hello. Uh, hello, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the conference, uh, enjoy the Kiev, and especially the weather. Uh, welcome. Uh, so, my talk will be non technical. I, I hope you will uh, relax a bit on it before the lunch. So let's continue, and my talk is named Open Source Strategy at Victoria Metrics. And before we start, uh, we need to answer two questions. The first one is, who am I? <laughs> uh, my name is Roman Havronenko, and I'm co-founder of Victoria Metrics. Besides that, I'm a um, software engineer with experience in distributed systems, in monitoring, and high-performance services. You can see my uh, GitHub account and Twitter links on the slides. And the second question is, what is Victoria Metrics, <laughs> of course? Well, uh, Victoria Metrics is open source, uh, time series database and monitoring solution. If you ever heard about Prometheus, Influx, Timescale, DB, Cortex, Tanas, we all compete uh, in the same area, area of storing and processing time series data. And in this talk, I will try to tell you uh, how it looks like to work full time on the open source project. So the first version of Victoria Metrics was released three years ago, and that was the title from our Medium post about that we, we released our product and uh, please everyone start to use it. Uh, you can ask why will someone put another product name in the title uh, of, of your product releasing blog post? Why Prometheus? And the answer is simple because Popularity of Prometheus at that time, three years ago, was rising blazing fast. You see uh, one of the graphs which measures this popularity. Uh, small disclaimer, we don't use any code written by a Prometheus organization, but we like the idea uh, and the philosophy which stands behind uh, monitoring approach, the mon modern monitoring approach, how it could look like and how software should work uh, nowadays. But what is even more important, we've seen the weak spots of existing solutions and Prometheus including. So the idea immediately came up uh, that could be a market fit. So uh, follow my logic. Prometheus will get more and more adoption. Uh, users will start to use it more extensively, put more data into it, more companies will adopt it. The weak points of Prometheus and existing solutions start to be more noticeable. And our solution, Victoria Metrics, is going to cover those weak spots. And eventually, we will become a solution for high loaded monitoring. So that's the market fit, right? And that was the, our main strategy. With a product which we knew uh, was the most efficient on the market, the fastest one. We will just sit back and wait while other solutions will fail and users will come to us and use our solution. So in October 2018, we released software as a service platform, uh, the platform where a user can create multiple instances of Victoria Metrics and instrument their Prometheus to offload all this data burden, massive uh, volumes of data to Victoria Metrics and uh, be cool, right? <laughs> But that didn't happen. Nobody came. <laughs> Nobody used our solution. Why? I guess many of you know why. Well, uh, the strategy was a bit, uh, how to better put it, naive, right? The totally new unknown database and company expects users will trust their data, and this will never work. So what are strategy mistakes? We haven't no credibility totally new, unknown projects, and user, users and people used to believe that everything which is younger, like five years, will be full of bugs and non-production ready. There was no any big company or big name behind us, so why would you trust to something like this? Also, software as a service uh, model uh, assumes that users will put and store their data somewhere in the cloud on our site. Do they even know if we have money to pay for that storage? And also dependency on the other product. As, yes, as I said, we had this Prometheus in the title. And why it gives us some traction uh, from the Prometheus community, it also binds us. 
it limits us. It makes us something supplementary, not the whole. So, so five months, months later, in 2019, we open sourced everything. And the Apache 2 license on GitHub, everyone can, can use it for free. And that was our medium post about open sourcing. Uh, of Victoria metrics, and let's let's get into details why we did this. So there is a famous quote, which you can find um, uh, people use uh, in slides or talks uh, in uh, blog posts connecting the, uh, related to open source. If you build it, they will come. So in two words, this uh, quote means that if you have a really good product, eventually users will find it and will use it. Uh, we can have endless discussions if it's uh, right or not, but from my perspective, the most important thing in this quote is they. They are people who use the product. Without people, without community, without those who benefit from it, there is no product. So the first thing to do, that we had to do, is to find those people, to build our community, to earn their trust. and. Because of that, we decided to become open source. That's exactly our logic and a quotation from our blog post explaining why we open sourced. And um, of course, that's not enough just to open your product uh, on GitHub to get, the, uh, to get distraction and attention. You need to do something more. After you build the product, you need to build community for this product. So there is a famous talk uh, from Peter Levin about open source projects, and it contains one of the slides contains this open source top of funnel. Top of funnel consists of four categories. The first one is awareness and interest. That's the most critical uh, part. It basically defines your market fit and interest from uh, people in your product. The second one is consideration. That's how you manage your product, like uh, roadmaps, features, bugs fixing all the processes inside uh, which, which cover this product. The third one is evaluation and intent. That's uh, about finding business opportunities uh, for your product. And the first is purchasing expansion. That's how you distribute the value of the product. By value, I mean uh, what exactly this product solves, how it helps to people. So. In our open source strategy, strategy of Victoria Metrics, we have the first section and fourth section tightly connected. And I'll explain why. So about spreading the value, there are two main strategies, top down and bottom up. Top down is also named as sales serve. It basically means that first you contact executives of the big companies and sell, I mean sell your product to them. And then they distribute it over departments, basically like saying, here's the new product, and you, everyone need to use it. And there is an old joke that nobody gets fired for buying IBM, you know, and uh, executives and managers are oftenly buying the big, uh, well-known products and asking their company to use it. Even if you don't want it, uh, you will be forced to use it. And as you see, it's quite impossible to follow this strategy if no one knows you and you don't have enough uh, connections and money to change that. The second strategy is called bottom-up or also self-serve. It means that at first individuals start to use your product. Uh, they maybe like it, maybe love it, enjoy it, and then they tell it about this product to their friends or maybe using in their small projects in the company and eventually they propagate this idea, the value of your product, from bottom to up. And at some point, executives of these companies uh, will find that half of their company already using some new unknown product just because of its value, not because they were told to. So all four founders of Victoria Metrics are engineers. We heavily used and contributed to open source our entire career. And we don't like these fancy slides, promotions, and all this stuff. We don't like when someone tells us which product to use. And that's exactly what we decided to do with Victoria Metrics. We will help other people to solve their everyday problems for free with our product. In return, we will hope that people will spread the word. 
Because if they don't, maybe there is no much sense to continue to do this if they don't like a product. So that's what we started to do. We started to build community. And the first steps are really easy. That's clear license, like stating that you're using Apache 2, uh, guidelines, documentation. Well, actually, documentation not that easy. Uh, documentation is hard. Uh, it must be helpful, uh, rich, easy to read and use, indexable for uh, search engines. And what is more important, it must be up to date. And here are some numbers I fetched from our GitHub repository before the slides. Uh, for example, we have about 9,000 lines of markdown documentation that's not common in the code, it's just markdown. And also we have 120,000 uh, 120, lines of code. So as you see, for every 16 lines of code, we have one explanatory uh, line in the documentation. And from 3,000 of commits over these last three years, every six commit was connected with documentation by modifying it, adding new or deleting the outdated documentation. So be prepared to the fact that documentation will be an inevitable part of your everyday routine with open source project. The second thing is articles. Articles are a very good way to explain what is your product and its value. And what is even more important, engineers can write articles. And uh, historically, we had multiple categories for articles. One of them uh, is announcements. Announcements uh, is a cool thing because it helps to build the connection between feature and your product. You may say that that's not a really good idea to promote something that you don't have yet. But actually, it builds that connection in people's brain. And when they find themselves in the situation when they need one specific feature, they will uh, remember about your product and go and check documentation. So maybe it was already implemented. So make announcements. Another one is benchmarks. Benchmarks are a cool thing to get attention. Why? Because you can name your competitors in such articles, <laughs> especially big ones. You can uh, get some part of the community by showing how cool your product is, especially if it's true, if, if your product is uh, in true way is better than theirs. So use benchmarks. They may be tricky because you may be accused into not being objective, not to being fair. Even if you put all the details of the conducted benchmarks in the GitHub repo so users can uh, repeat it themselves, you still uh, will get negative feedback. So <laughs> be ready for that and open for such, uh, for such a feedback. The third one is uh, technical articles. Uh, that's uh, where you explain how something works under the hood. And myself, I, I find it really cool uh, category, the most interesting one, but it gets the least uh, portion of attention. And here's why. Because people don't like, most of people don't like this uh, boring technical details. Details. They like how-to articles and guides where they can just, where they can just copy paste uh, some code snippet and it will work. So these articles about how to guides are very important to have. And the most important category of articles you could ever have is the third party articles. Articles written by community, by people who use your product. And that's exactly the word of mouth strategy which gives you the most credibility. It doesn't matter what you say about your company. It matters what other people think and say about your company. So. Please appreciate if someone in your community do this, contact them, uh, show that you value what they do, and support them as, as much as you can, because people is the most important part of your product. And also be ready to put a lot of efforts into helping such, people's, uh, such people. For example, here's uh, one of the GitHub issues that was solved in a few hours, and we get some appreciation from our users. Actually, we're known for being really fast in solving such bug or feature requests. So, and people like it. They really like it and often say that our support is uh, like outstanding. It's very important to be such responsive because for person who submitted, for example, this bug report, that was something like uh, uh, he discovered this bug report, tried to fight it, 
and uh, failed. So he decided to go in public and make a bug report that you can uh, then solve for you as a maintainer that can be like tens of uh, feature requests or bugs per day. It's not something important, but for a person who makes this report, that's maybe the most, uh, most important event of the day. So be helpful. Also, you need to choose a platform where will you communicate with uh, people who use your product and grow uh, the community. For example, the most of activity in Victoria Metrics is happening, is happening on GitHub, in Slack, and Telegram. But also, every day, we respond on the emails, on the Reddit posts, Hacker New posts, Medium posts. We answer on Stack Overflow, uh, so on Twitter as well, uh, and the rest of them. So keep communicating. Also, communication not only gives you understanding of how good your product is or how it's production ready, uh, not only helps to fix bugs, but it also gives you a di direction of growth. Uh, the most fair feedback from the real users in the real world, uh, you will know what they want. You know, big companies paying a lot of money to, for researches, which will tell them what their customers will want or want now. And here on GitHub, you give it for f you get it for free. But tricky part of it of this is that you need to have a strong ownership of, over the product because not all the feature requests are that great. Some of them may have negative impacts on the uh, reliability and maintain maintenance in the future. So you need to know how to say no. And also evangelism, <laughs> as you see, I'm not in the spider web, uh, spider man costume today, but uh, in the early days of company, co-founders often act as first evangelists. Most of our articles, technical on Medium, are written by our CTO, and the very first promotion on the public platform was uh, done by him. At some platforms, he was even banned uh, for being you know, too active with this promotion, but that was essential at that moment. So as the company expands, uh, please pay attention to your community and find this rare uh, combination of uh, communication skills and technical skills. Make everything possible to hire those people and let them spread the word about your company and about your product and explain them, uh, help them to explain the value of your product to other people. Also, they say you can't improve what you don't measure. When you do something, you need to know what other, uh, what it gave to you, was the, your decision good or bad. So you need to have metrics. So for example, this is the project by Linux Foundation called Chaos. Uh, it stands for Community Health Analytics Open Source Software. And many people recommend to use it. Me personally find it's a bit complex to use, but you always can have different metrics. For example, we track uh, downloads on the Docker Hub. This basically shows the interest, how, how many people are pulling images of our releases uh, every day and how it depends with release cycle. So that's a good metric. Also, you can track uh, stars on the GitHub and compare yourself uh, to competitors. Of course, it's not 100% fair because I've seen the case when totally new database got like 10,000 stars overnight out of blue and no one knows uh, what is it. So uh, not 100% correct. What else can you have? You can have usage data or also called telemetry. So this is a screenshot from Kibana. Kibana by default sends some uh, usage statistic to the mothership, uh, which can be then analyze what you did uh, with Kibana. And you can disable uh, this function, by, but by default it's turned on. Uh, so interesting things, that user, interesting things that users might be okay with such approach. But sometimes they might be not. For example, the recent case with GitLab when they changed overnight the policy of the telemetry and uh, had to roll it back. Actually, they caught reputation damage after that. And fun fact, right at that moment, uh, with the situation with GitLab, uh, we were about to introduce our own telemetry to product. And because what we've seen happen to GitLab, we uh, decided to wait. And as you see, this PR was never merged. Another nice metric I find very good the, in our specific case when the first and first uh, st stages are connected 
with this bottom-up strategy where you propagate the value from the bottom to the up. Uh, that's the amount of jobs, open job position mentioned in your product. It's really good to uh, uh, have good correlation with the strategy, especially when companies you never talk to uh, suddenly start to use your product. And as I said, Victoria Metrics is three years old. And from this graph, you can clearly see that spike uh, of popularity of commits right, exact, right after that we open sourced it uh, in the middle between April, April and July. It really boosted the product. Our community started to grow. Uh, we got the first uh, feedbacks from uh, Victoria Metrics used in production by uh, really cool companies. And exactly this energy continues to drive us nowadays as well. It helps us to, to build and develop the product and our community is the one which supports us and let us to do this. So that's, that was mostly all <laughs> about my talk. Uh, on the slides you can see some resources I used in this talk. Uh, and if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them. Okay, what about questions? Yeah, I see some. Just a moment. I saw hands somewhere here. Please. Uh, thank you for your great uh, talk. And uh, I want to uh, ask you one question. Why did you choose uh, Go for your main product? Why not some uh, older languages like C++, C++ or maybe some more, uh, yeah, or maybe Rust, <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is the answer. We choose Go because uh, at that time we had the most of expertise in that language. Our CTO really likes uh, Go and contributes back to the uh, Golang language. And we also find it really easy to maintain and develop when you have more than one developer. In our experience, Go showed it extremely well. We don't have any problems with competitors written in other languages, in performance, I mean. And we will continue to stick to the Golang language in future as well. Uh, one more question. Please. Uh, so you mentioned uh, Kibana uh, in your talk, uh, so uh, it uh, got me, uh, I was reminded of uh, the, um, uh, something that happened recently is the Elasticsearch and uh, AWS, right? So let's imagine some uh, cloud service provider um, wants to make a managed uh, Victoria metric service. Uh, what would you do in such circumstance? Okay, thank you for the question. Um, actually, uh, that happened more than once, uh, and we see that other companies, open source companies, are also frequently change their license. We don't have such plans yet. We, we will continue to provide uh, our software under Apache 2 license. And the case that you mentioned, that's maybe like a good problem to have, you know, <laughs> when someone so that big as Amazon tries to borrow a product. But we'll see what would happen and what, how we will react on that. Okay, okay, one more question. Thanks for the talk. Um, I wanted to ask, I'm not particularly familiar with Victoria Metrics, but still, how do you earn money with an open source project? That's, that's like the most interesting thing, I guess. Sorry, can you repeat the question? How do you earn money with an open source project, right? Do you search for funding or something? No, we never looked for funding, actually. Uh, we are like boots, self-bootstrapped company, and we earn money from support. So uh, sometimes when big companies are using any product, they want to have a backup, and that's exactly uh, when they need support plans. So oh. we as a core team, we act as a... Uh, Two more hands. Yeah, we're helping them to make sure that everything will be great. Anton, your next question. 
Thank you. Thank you very much for your talk. Uh, could you please uh, say, uh, tell about, uh, do you encourage your users to spread your technology in some way, or it just happens uh, in natural way, something like that? You can never force someone to do this, actually. It I don't say push, I, I say encourage. Do you have s something to say about that? Uh, no, no, we don't. Uh, like, we're trying to encourage, like, uh, saying, here's a great article written by us, or here's the uh, new cool features in Victoria Metrics. Try it and say how it looks like. And then uh, they have a decision if they want to have a private feedback, or maybe they go on Twitter and said that something doesn't work or work is better than expected. So that's all. We're trying Thank to encourage, but that's a tricky thing to <laughs> ask Thank people you. to do this. Thank you very much. Okay, and one more question, maybe the last one. Okay, thanks for your talk. Uh, as far as I remember, Victoria Metrics is a small binary and all the configuration is handled by uh, command line flags. What is the reason behind this decision? Uh, why not a config file? Uh, decision, is, uh, decision was based on simplicity at the first. Flags were simpler to use, but we also uh, support environment variables, which can be used in the same fashion as flags. And then you can just make a file with environment variables, and it will, will really look like a configuration file. And that was like the main decision uh, reason. Thanks. The oh, uh, maybe you ask um, the speaker between talks uh, because the time slot is finished. Uh, we have exactly the time of our next talk, so thank you this, once again to this. Thank you. All.